Hi, I'm Genia. This is Myra and this is Fred. So we are from the elections and we're here today to provide you with some information on the process of election, how to become a registered voter, and to see if any of you are interested in working on election day. So the County of Hawaii Elections Office has two locations, one in Hilo, which is our main office, located at the County Building in, um, at 25 Okuni Street, and our satellite office is in Kona at West Hawaii Civic Center. You may ask, what do we do at the Elections Office? Um, we prepare for and conduct federal, state, and county elections, which occur every two years. So next year is an election year. Um, the primary election will be held on August 8th, and the general election is on November 3rd. And you may ask, why should you vote? Well, so you'll be graduating and entering the real world. So you're the next generation. It's your time to take a look at what you'd like to see done in your community, your island, your state, and your country. You can help voice the creation of laws that will affect you. And these are just some examples. Right now, the drive rate increases. Um, the age is to get your permit is old. You need to be 16 to get a provision and 17 to get your license. So your vote can actually change these age limits. Another example is minimum wage. As of now, the minimum wage is 10 and 10 tenths. Compared to 2001 when the minimum wage was 7.25. But again, your vote, your vote can change this amount. Uh, the last example is here I can share with you is the proposed space port that is to be built here on the island in Kiao. And of course, there's the wall that President Trump is building along the Mexican borderline. Your vote can affect the outcomes in so many situations just like these. All you need to do is vote. There are many different levels of our government. The federal government is led by President Donald Trump and includes the Vice President, two U.S. Senators, and the House of Representatives. At the state level, led by Governor David Ige, there is one Lieutenant Governor, four State Senators, seven State House of Representatives, and the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And at the county level, led by, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> there's Mayor Harry Kim, nine council members, and one prosecuting attorney. Your vote can determine who will occupy every single one of these positions. So the steps to voting is pretty easy. First, you register to vote and educate yourself about the candidates that are running for office and that share the same views as you. And last but not least, you vote. There are several ways to cast your vote. You can vote on election day at your polling place, vote at early walk-in voting, that is usually approximately 10 days before election day. Walk-in voting is set up at four locations around the island, Hilo, Kona, Waimea, and Kona. <coughs> vote by, or you can vote by absentee mail. There are two types. You can apply for a permanent absentee voter or seasonal voter. Seasonal applications are good for voters who are going away to college or into the military. And there are three qualifications you need to become a registered voter in Hawaii. First, you must be a U.S. Hawaii citizen, you must be a resident of Hawaii, and you must be at least 16 years of age to pre-register, and 18 years old on election day to vote. How do you register to vote? It's easy, you can register online, and when you apply, you know your Hawaii driver's license or state ID card. There's an option to also register to vote on the application form, or you can also register by completing a voter registration and permanent absentee application. So Mara's going to explain to you how to fill out an application so you can turn one in today. Okay, so everybody got an application coming in the door, and we're going to go over it real quick. So in block one, there's three qualification questions. You need to answer yes to each question in order to be eligible to register. So first question, are you a citizen of the United States of America? Yes or no? Are you at least 16 years of age? Yes or no? And are you a resident of the state of Hawaii? Yes or no? Um, does everybody have a pen? She's asking you, those that are Enter 
your last name, first name, middle initial, and a suffix if you have one. Your suffix is if you're like a junior or senior. Block three is where you enter your Hawaii driver's license number or state ID number if you have one. And if you don't, you can put the last four digits of your social security number. If you don't know this information or you don't have it on you right now, you can still complete the application and turn it in today. Just make sure you leave a contact number or email address so that we can follow up with you after. Okay? Okay, block four, enter your date of birth, phone number, and email address. <laughs> block five is where you put your residence and mailing address in Hawaii. This one is really important. Your residence address is your house and street address, okay? It's not your PO box. And the reason it's important is because when you put this address, this is what determines what district and precinct you belong to, okay? If your mailing address... District and precinct. Maybe they don't know about that, but they haven't told me yet. Okay. Even with me, I didn't know what precinct I was. And the first time I voted, I went to the wrong place. So like in the county level, there's different councilmen and they represent different areas of the island. So depending on what area you live in, that's the councilman that represents you, okay? So depending on your district and your precinct, so district would be more like for your state representatives and such, the higher levels, yeah? But it determines what what candidates you're going to end up voting for, which ones are going to be supporting you and doing things for you, depending on where you live, okay? So if your mailing address is the same as your street address, then you would check the box that says the same. If not, you'd put that mailing address as well. So that would be like PO Box or General Delivery or whatever it is. Block 7 is optional. It's for permanent absentee voters. Permanent absentee voting status is when instead of going to the post to vote on election day, we mail the ballot to you and you can vote at home and then you send it back. Okay. This would be every year. Once you elect to be a permanent absentee, every election would send you a ballot. So if that's how you want to do it, then you check that box. Okay. And then block 8 is for your signature. So once you're registered to vote on election year, all registered voters will receive this yellow notification card. And what the notification card tells you is when election day is, where your polling place is, and it'll also have your name, address, and information on there. What you want to do when you get this card is to just double check that your personal information is correct. Okay? If it is correct, you don't need to do anything with it if it needs to be corrected. It's a three-part card where you can make corrections and turn it into us so we can make the corrections for you. You can also use this to cancel your voter registration if you need to. Does anyone know what a single-party primary is? Nobody? Okay, in Hawaii, when you register to vote, you don't need to declare a political party. So you don't need to say, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, I'm an independent party. You don't need to declare that. So when you vote in the primary election, what it is, it's kind of like um, all the people from the same political party are competing and the winner of that political party is the one that advances to the general. Okay? So on a primary election ballot, when you go to vote, what you need to do is you need to select your political party at that time. So say you want to select the Democratic Party. So you would choose a Democratic Party, and when you vote, you can only vote for candidates within that party. If you vote outside of the party that you selected, your vote won't be counted. Okay, this is only the primary election. Okay. Also, in the
primary ballot, there are special nonpartisan offices. Those are for like the county council and stuff. Those ones, the party doesn't matter. You can vote for whichever candidate you prefer. For the general election, the winners from the primary of each party will advance to the general. And on that ballot, they'll also have um, you voting on state constitutional and county charter amendments. Okay. Now, if you elect to vote by absentee, we'll mail you a ballot. So you'll get the ballot in the mail. And what you do is you vote on your ballot. You put that ballot into the yellow secret ballot envelope. And then you put that envelope into the blue envelope. And then you need to sign your name, and then you send it back to us. And with the permanent absentee or seasonal absentee, we also put a reminder in there that tells you what the deadline is that you need to get it back to us to make sure we receive it on time to be counted. Okay, now does anyone here want to earn any extra money next year? Next year is election year, and every year we need to recruit about 700 workers to work on election day. It takes a lot of people to pull this off, and we do recruit people from the high schools. You can make between $85 and $165 for every election day that you work. All you need to do is be at least 16 years old, on or before election day, be a registered folder, able to read and write English, they have 25 to 35 pounds, and attend a training session. So if you are interested, on the top of your application, you can write Peel Worker. And then make sure there's contact information so that when next year comes around and you start the community, contact you, okay? You can keep up to date with our elections news on Facebook, at our website, 